come and have fun with Drupal. Here we go again. Welcome back to Drupal Fever. This is another step in our series created to help you set up a Drupal development environment on your computer. The task today is setting up PHP on Apache. This video will be a little different than previous ones. I don't know if anyone noticed, but these videos were growing longer and longer and frankly, we're getting out of hand. The last video was almost 40 minutes. So I decided to go straight to the practical phase of this lesson. We will start by running our CentOS virtual machine. If you don't have it set up yet, watch our previous videos. We need to open a terminal window. Let's drag it to the corner. Open the window a little bit. The first thing you are going to do is become a super user. Now type your root password. Enter. Now clear. Let me paste this command here, which will use nano to open up the Apache configuration file, like we did on our previous lesson. We will search for the string name virtual host. Remember to always pay attention to capitalization in Linux. Now we need to uncomment this line. We need to search now for virtual host between angle brackets. Usually this is the last line in the Apache configuration file. We are going to add a couple of lines like so. Since I have just enabled virtual host on Apache, I will have to make this localhost declaration here so the server continues to work in the same way it did before enabling this feature. Now I need to save and exit nano. Now we have to reload the Apache server. Since we have made these changes on localhost, we should open a web browser just to make sure everything still works. And it does. The browser is still showing the Apache test page. So let's close it. Now we need to go to a folder where some of the Apache configuration files are located. Let me check what this folder has. As we can see, there are two Apache configuration files already here. Whenever Apache starts, it reads the content of each file located on this folder that has the extension .conf. So we are going to create our own configuration file. We will use nano to create a file called drupalfever.conf Instead of Drupal Fever, you should name this file according to your own domain name. Now you need to type the following to make the virtual host configuration work for your development environment. For document root, I'm going to type a path that I haven't created yet. The server name here should be the same name you used when configuring the host's file, like we did in the previous lesson. Let's save and close Nano. Now we need to go to our web server's root folder and create a folder we just made reference to on the virtual host's configuration file. With mkdir, we create the Drupal Fever folder. Now we need to change the folder's ownership. We do that by using the shown command. As you can see here, the Drupal Fever folder was owned by the root user and is now owned by Apache. 
the folder permissions are still not okay, so we will change that with the command schmod. With these new permissions, members of the Apache group are going to be able to make changes to the web files. That's what we wanted. Now we need to restart the Apache server. Now let's enter into our website folder and with nano we're going to create an index.html file to test our new virtual host configuration. I will type hello world here, save and exit nano. We also need to change permissions and ownership of this file in the same way we did with the folder. Now let's check on the web browser if our new virtual host configurations are working. HTTP colon slash slash drupalfever.com Enter. Hello world! It worked. That's great. Now we are going to install PHP on Apache. As you can see, when we run the command rpm space dash q space php it says package php is not installed so we are going to install php and a couple of additional php modules that are required by drupal let me paste this command here the command is yum space dash y space install space php space php dash common space php dash cli space php dash gd space php dash m crypt space php dash pair space php dash mysql space php dash xml and php dash mb string Now, service space httpd space restart. It restarted OK. Now, when you type rpm space dash q space php and press enter, it says that php dash 5.3.3 and so on was installed, which is great. Now we are going to create a file on a website but instead of using nano we're going to echo a file this file is going to call a function called php info we will save the echo output in a file called php info.php now when we list the files in our web root we can see that the new php file is owned by root and it doesn't have the right permissions so we need to go back to shown and set Apache as the file's owner and set the permissions to 775. Now, when you list the files again, you can see that the ownership and permissions have changed. Now we need to try our first PHP web page and see if it works. There you go. PHP is working and you can see on this page all the PHP enabled modules but we still need to change a couple of configurations on PHP we will use nano to change the php.ini file we're going to search for error underscore reporting equals e underscore all and t 
tilt E underscore deprecated. Enter. We need to go to the end of this line and change it from deprecated to notice. Now we need to search for something else. Display underscore errors equals off. And we are going to change it to on. Search again for semicolon date dot time zone space equal. And you need to go to this URL here to find out how your time zone is called. I already went there and found out that even though I live in Florida, my time zone is the same as in New York. So that's what I'm going to use here. Let's go up. Now the following configuration changes are not critical, but I still recommend doing them because the default PHP configuration is pretty restrictive. We should search for max underscore execution underscore time equals 30 and change it to 120 seconds. Now we should search for real path underscore cache underscore size equals 16k. Now we uncomment this line and change it to 2 megabytes. Search again max underscore input underscore time equals 60 and change it to 120 seconds. Now save, close and restart server again. Everything seems to be working. Now let me shorten this window a little bit. Now I'm going to install a PHP module called APC, Alternative PHP Cache. You type yum space install space php dash pecl dash apc. I could have installed this module at the beginning, but this is not really required by Drupal. However, APC will certainly be enabled on your production environment and you should therefore be familiarized with it. Now we use nano to change the APC configuration. Now let's search for the line apc.shm underscore size equals 64 megabytes. Oh, the line was right there, force of habit. We will change it from 64 megabytes to 1 gigabyte. I know it's a lot more memory, but the development environment has plenty of space. This configuration change will prevent future clashes between APC and PHP MyAdmin. Now, if you type PHP space dash M, you'll get a full list of the enabled modules. APC should be at the top of this list. You could also use grep to filter out the other modules like so. APC is enabled and now we need to restart Apache again. Now we should refresh the PHP page just to make sure that everything is still running. Now let's close the browser and exit this terminal. That's it. I told you this video was going to be faster. If you guys have any request, please drop a note on my website, on my YouTube channel or send me a tweet. I truly appreciate your feedback and encouragement and please subscribe to my YouTube channel or follow me on Twitter to be informed of the next video which is going to be about MySQL. See you then!